Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Baldur's Gate. We're going to be playing an evil party on Insanity Difficulty. Um, I, uh, I've been in the mood to play some Baldur's Gate recently, and with the holidays coming up and the fact that I'm going to be away for a week, um, I needed something that I could really easily do a bunch of bulk recordings for, and I thought Baldur's Gate would be a great fit. And maybe if it goes well, maybe we'll actually go through and try to do a playthrough of Baldur's Gate 2 after this. We've tried a couple of times on the channel to uh, do Baldur's Gate 2, and it, it sort of just petered out early, but hopefully you can do that. In any case, I'm committed definitely to do a full playthrough of, um, of Baldur's Gate 1 here, which I enjoy Baldur's Gate 1 so much. Yeah, I know there's, like, more companion interaction in Baldur's Gate 2, and... There's, um, you know, it's a bigger, more epic game, but there's something I really enjoy about Baldur's Gate 1. A little bit of the, it's a little bit more of a light, more humorous game, which I think I enjoy quite a bit. Um, and I like a lot of the wilderness parts of this. Actually, my parts of Baldur's Gate 1 I like the least, I think, is when we get into Baldur's Gate itself. And I think that's the same sort of thing with Baldur's Gate 2. Like, the cities don't vibe as me as much. I want to I wanna be out in the wilderness exploring there and doing dungeons. So I think that's part of it. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started real what quick is here. This, this is not going to be a, a Let's Play where I necessarily talk about, you know, all the, uh, all, all the sort of tutorial style stuff that we do. I'm assuming a lot of people have seen Baldur's Gate before, at least played some. And in any case, this beginning part, we're going to burn through this as quickly as we can. Uh, just to get out into proper adventure, and then we can talk about what our evil partiness is going to look like. Now, we're not going to be... Mustache Tory, like psychopath terrorist evil. No, we are going to be self interested, strategic, and very political evil. That means we're going to do plenty of things that are going to keep our reputation high. However, we cannot max out our reputation because if we do that, our evil party members will indeed leave. And, um,. That won't be ideal for us. Uh, hey, Fuller, you got any errands I can run? Oh, you need some crossbow uh, bolts, but I have to have some crossbow bolts. Anyway, don't mind me. Even though Hall hasn't asked me about anything, I'm going to go and loot his stuff in his chest here. But this is going to be totally fine. We're going to come in here and fight this guy for some XP. Although I will quick save first in case something goes crazy. So we are in insanity difficulty, and insanity does a few things. It will lead to bigger packs of enemies, which is fine. I actually don't know how it affects the size of the enemies too much. The big thing is that we are going to take double damage from everything on Insanity Difficulty. Thank you for dying. Much appreciated. Let's turn this on. Let's do that. Let's turn this on and go ahead and move that. So yeah, that damage is actually kind of annoying. Nothing in there, really? I thought there was. Okay. Um, grab a little bit of gold here. I don't know if these barrels have anything. There we go. Yes, we've been Something attacked. Everything sucks. Mind. Oh, it's terrible. All right, thank you. There, I mean, there's a great story in here, but I really don't want to linger in the, oh, the intro parts. Gate Warden wants strict. to do sort of an extended tutorial where we learn how to do... There we go. Where we learn how to fight with a party, which we're not going to deal with. We're going to talk to Hull here. And he's going to say, oh, he forgot his longsword. Hey, I brought your longsword with you. That's great. Wonderful. Perfect. Lovely. We'll get that. Now, at this point, this is where we are suffering a little bit from the fact that we don't have any charisma and we are evil aligned. Um, so we are getting very low reaction rolls to people, so we're not getting any bonus quest stuff. All right, we're going to kill these rats and we're going to talk about our character. Who am I playing as? I am playing... Do I not have the AI turned on? Oh, no, there we go. We're attacking. Good. Didn't look like we were. Um, I am playing an elven fighter mage thief. I really like the combo, the multi-classing in Baldur's Gate, generally speaking, for my characters. Even if I'm playing something, like if I were to play a cleric, I'd probably play a fighter cleric, for example. Just because being a fighter opens up more in terms of weapon options. Um, you get slightly better Thacko. Is it just the barrel that's got something? It is. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty good. Oh, Reaver, I killed all those rats. Thank you very much. Um, John, I don't know if we get XP for this. I'm assuming so. We just go, have to go and whack him while we're being attacked by other things. There we go. We did good. Nope. I guess we don't get XP from that. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Couldn't remember. Anyway. So, yeah. Normally, so, uh, normally in the big thing that's different between um, a good playthrough of Baldur's Gate what and do you Evil need? One. In a good playthrough, you're going to get your reputation all the way up to level 20. Let me quick save here in case we die in this fight. Because of insanity oh. difficulty. Um... Your reputation, you're going to get up to level 20. And that's going to give you uh, the best reaction from NPCs, which might lead to better quest rewards. It is also going to uh, lead to very, very good shop prices. But 
evil characters in your party will leave if your reputation gets to 19 or above. And in fact, if your reputation is 15 or above and you temporarily dismiss a character mm -hmm. from your party, they will leave permanently. So that's the, the big difference is with an evil campaign is, or a good campaign, you normally can't use the evil characters because they'll leave if they, your reputation gets too high. So if you want to use the evil characters, you got to limit your rep. And then if you're going to do that, you may as well use all the evil characters. I mean, there's no real reason that you couldn't, um, uh, words, words, words. There's no real reason that you can't, you know, mix good and evil characters together as long as you don't let your reputation get to any extreme. What we're going to do is we're going to try to maintain a relatively high reputation here so that we can get decent prices for things, but we're going to make sure it doesn't go too high up. Uh, again, 19 and 20 is as far as we can get safely. Anything it's beyond that will cause us problems. All right, let's take a look at my little character here. Um, spent a long time rolling his stats, the entire World Cup finale, just rolling stats for my character over here. And then I asked, uh, I, I uh, used an AI, used a stable diffusion, an art AI. Uh, I fed it an image of me and asked it to make me a Baldur's Gate portrait. And there we go. Look at that. No beard, but it's kind of me-ish. I was actually kind of impressed. So we got ourselves a custom portrait. So great stats over here. Um, we did, of course, want really good strength because, I mean, it's going to help us carry things. It'll also help us a lot in melee combat. We've got fantastic dexterity. This, we are an elf, so we get plus one dexterity, so we're going to have 19. It's going to be great for armor class, great for ranged combat. 17 constitution is as high as we can get as an elf. We are, um, we do have a fighter class, so we do benefit from constitution that's above 16 in uh, Baldur's Gate using the old AD&D rules. Um, if you're not a fighter type 16 constitution is the most that you benefit for but we would benefit from more uh we want high intelligence because we are a mage and we're going to want to be able to cast spells uh charisma of eight is as low as i'm allowed to go with this particular setup so we're just dumping that really unless you can get really high charisma charisma is going to be kind of a dumb stat ideally you'd like one person in your party that's got high charisma and you put them in the lead and then you'll get a slightly better reaction check from merchants and things for pricing um we'll be picking up a paladin to fill that role and then the rest of the points are just dumped into wisdom here uh, come baldur's gate 2 we will appreciate having a high wisdom for the purpose of um uh casting wish spells so we can we can pump this up with a with a, all the various uh, wisdom books and things we're going to be eating every single one of the stat books that we find in this run except for the charisma one since going from an eight to a nine charisma does nothing uh we are going to feed the charisma book to our paladin just to improve the face of the party as much as possible. In Baldur's Gate 2, you do quite early on get a ring, I think that sets your charisma to like 18 or something. So you can use that if you want to be a party front. Now, in terms of fighting style here, I really long-term, and especially if this character gets brought into Baldur's Gate 2, I really want this character to be a dual longsword wielding type person. So we're gonna get longsword specialization. As a multi-class fighter, we, our proficiencies can only go up to specialize. We can't get mastery or anything like that as a multi-class fighter, uh, which means we're we're gonna have a lot of diversity in skills rather than being hyper focused on any one. So ultimately, yeah, dual wielding long swords or potentially another weapon rather than long sword, we will see, is gonna be the long term sort of goal for Baldur's Gate 2. Um, over here, though, we are going to be mostly having to play as an archer early on which is my, my pro proficiencies over here. I did specialize in longbow. I did go ahead and specialize the longsword. Um, I'm not opposed to using the E keeper, like character editor, come Baldur's Gate 2 to switch from longsword to something else. If we decide that something else would be more fitting to our theme, but I went ahead and grabbed that. So it will give me a melee option now. And then as we level up, I'm gonna put ranks into two weapon fighting style. Uh, the reason I took um, fighter mage thief, I considered going fighter mage and that's really, I'm gonna be playing this character mostly as a fighter mage. Um, mage for buffing ourselves like crazy so that eventually we can go in melee with you know, stone skins and other defenses and stuff like that. Uh, but as an evil party, there's not a lot of, it, to me, it feels great choices for an evil thief in your party. Um, now, again, since we're not actually going to be tanking our reputation, right? We're not going to go down to, like, a reputation of one or two, which is where good characters will leave. There's no reason we can't have plenty of good characters in our party. But thematically, I'm just going to try to give as much love as possible to the evil characters, because I don't usually use them in my runs, because they would leave when I hit rep 20. Um, so, because of that, I have gone ahead and made myself a thief over here, so that I'll be able to do find traps thing, which is mostly what I'm using here. I mean, we're not gonna level up very quickly because of our triple classes, um, but we will be able to be a decent trap finder for the party. Once the trap finding is maxed out, um, 
Well, normally I'd go open locks, but we can just use the knock spell, I suppose. I could do move silently stuff. I don't really like doing the backstabby game. I don't find it tremendously fun. Uh, I, I don't like the micromanagement. It's very powerful. It's just not for me, really. So I might not bother with that. Um, oh, spellbook. Do, do, do. I have to cast. This would have made me feel a little safer fighting those, uh, those assassins. There you go. We're going to go ahead and summon ourselves a familiar. I'm going to make sure that slot is empty. I'm going to talk to the familiar. So the way the familiar works is half of the hit points of the familiar. How may I be of assistance? Half the hit points of the familiar get added to me. And it is actually not a bad fighter at level one, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the bag. So we've gone from nine hit points to 15 because the this familiar here has 12 hit points. So we get six added to us, which is a pretty substantial boost early on. And that's it. Now that we've got that, I can stop memorizing the familiar. I will memorize identify for some utility stuff. What we are not going to be going around as a spellcaster stuff person early on. Although theoretically, I could memorize some sleep spells and play in that role. And we, we, we may switch back and forth. We'll see. Um, let's go and sell all this. And I'm going to pick up uh, my longbow. And... I'm not going to worry about a longsword. I'm not even going to use it early on. I'm just going to make sure we've got access to a longbow as early as possible. Um, oh, yeah, we have no money. Well, the longbow's really expensive. Hold on. Could I buy a composite longbow? Shit. I don't think I could afford it, though. Yeah. I tried to steal it. I should have. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. There we go. My hotel's as clean Excellent. As an Thanks, Winthrop. Uh, so I won't buy, bother buying this armor because it's microscopic. Uh, I'll just uh, get three piles of arrows, buy that, call that good enough. So yeah, the composite longbow gives us a plus one to hit, plus two damage. Uh, bows are excellent in Baldur's Gate because you uh, bows automatically hit plus one attack per round. So we're going to be attacking twice per round with a bow right from the start. It is really good. Short bows, long bows both have that benefit. Crossbows do not have that benefit, although there's a crossbow you can purchase in this game fairly early on uh, that does give you plus one attack. Slings don't get more than one attack per round, although you do get to add your uh, strength bonus to the sling for damage purposes, which actually can make them pretty deadly. Um, all throwing weapons, other than darts, also get to add your throwing bonus, and throwing knives and stuff like that get two attacks per round. Darts actually get three attacks per round, but you don't add your strength bonus. Range is very good in Baldur's Gate 1, especially early on because hit points are so low and it's all about striking first. So yeah, I bought that uh, longsword and didn't really need it, but or that longbow and didn't really need it, but that's going to be okay. Uh, let's rest just to cycle our traps and heal ourselves. All right, let's uh, let's go. Um, I guess I could loot upstairs. I mean, technically, there's a little bit of money. Most of these are locked. I mean, we can force them though. There's not much. Necklace isn't worth much. You're asleep. You're strong, so we can force all these open. Uh, this chest over here has a really valuable item. Um, but you need, I think you need 60 lockpick to open it, and we don't, yeah, uh, and we need, like, more strength than we could possibly manage. If you are very good at, uh, talking to people, no if you talk to these noble test. people and pick option number one here, then you can convince them to, uh, that basically they'll decide to leave their jewelry behind. They'll leave it in the exact same box. So you need excellent charisma and, like, 60 lockpicking to be able to get a whole bunch of other loot. You can also talk to Firebead Elvenhair 30 times and then stop. And then after a few moments, you'll, you'll get 300 gold. We're not going to do that. In fact, I hadn't even planned on explaining it, and yet here we are. I am very proud of you, you as I am sure Gorion is. Yeah, there we go. I think, I think that we did everything here. I think, I hope. We'll see. Let's take off. I mean, we could take off right away from Candlekeep, but yeah, we may as well have gotten a little bit of XP. Although I do want to not level up too much before we pick up our parties, our party members. Um, because... 
we want to get them when they're low level so that we can choose to give them the right proficiencies. And the other big thing is hit point rolls. Let's have a child. I'm just going to skip these. Oh. I'm sorry that you feel that that quote i'm sorry that you feel that way lives in my head like rent free all the time it's such a memorable line it's so good all right everyone sure we're gonna uh we're gonna add you to the party for for now i actually i actually quite like him i know some people don't i think everyone's perfectly fine as a character she doesn't annoy me or anything like that um you know i might use the potion of clarity just to guarantee yes. that we win a fight against uh the next assassin we're going to run into. Um, yeah, I don't, you don't, you don't say anything. Just get some backstory in the art. Did you instant disappear as opposed to walking off and then disappearing? I'm just going to pick up Moderon and uh, Zar over here. Uh, can I pick them up before fighting the Gibberling? Oh, there you go. didn't actually aggro. Thank you for the potion. And sure, I got to go meet someone first, but that's going to be fine. We'll just add some How people to the party resistance? temporarily. You gotta babysit Moderon a little, or sorry, Zar a little bit, because he doesn't have a ranged weapon at first, so he's gonna try to go up and melee people. Speaking of melee people, switch that around. Thank you very much. And yeah, he'll just die, which doesn't matter. We're not, I'm not gonna tell you who's gonna be. I've got an exact plan for who I want in my party. I'm not gonna tell you who they are, but uh, but Zar won't be one of those. So again, it won't be a big deal if uh, if he kicks the bucket really not the end of the world. Uh, so this belt here, I believe this is the belt of the antipode. Um, I guess I could identify you. Yeah. So cold resistance doubles fire based damage. I don't think we have any intention of using that at all. Uh, we're going to put a long sword in that slot. Quarter staffs can't be sold for anything, so we'll just ditch it, but we're still going to use our bow. I'll throw on this armor over here. I think anyone comes with a short bow, which is all she can use as her thief right now. Um, and then the rest of it, I'll just do this to clear up some inventory spot. Oh, right, there's no potion of speed I was carrying. Okay, let's just do this, that's gonna be fine. All right, let's leave this map. Now we can go for a full clear in these maps. Um, there's gonna be a few places where there's gonna be some random enemy spawns. And they can, uh, depending on what they are, see again, Zar wants to commit suicide, so we're just gonna pull them back here. Uh, whoa! This double damage is gonna be crazy. We're gonna have a lot of random givings that happen. Oof. Damn. All right. Da -da -da. Oh, the wanderer. Stay thy course a moment. All right. Thanks, Elminster. Um, I think we can. We should be able to rest here safely, and we're not on a time limit or anything like that yet. Rested two days and sixteen hours because we're doing the heal to full kind of thing. But yeah, we'll keep Monty uh, going. Yes, Monty doesn't come with a range thing, does he? Does he have a? Oh, he's got sling specialization. I don't have this thing for you, sorry. This so maybe I can give you a bow. Good. We're going to pick up the Ring of the Princes here, which is a plus one protection ring. I think I'll give it to... I will let Monty wear it for now. There you go. Saves him a point of AC. Because this is second edition, lower AC is better. Lower Thaco is better. Lower saving throws are better. All this makes perfect sense, of course. Yeah. Sure. Let's pretend. There is going to be one more thing we're going to do on this map once we get to it. We're going to kill an ogre, but I'm not going to do that quite yet, because currently I think it would splat us. Even though it would be very time efficient, actually, for us to pick up, uh, to kill the ogre right now, and we'd pick up its belt, well, belts, plural, but one in particular that we could turn into a quest over here. All right, this is the ring of we double up our spells. I'm just going to go ahead and wear that myself. Even though I'm not going to be doing a ton of spell casting. Uh, right now, I'll just memorize a second identify, because sure, why not? And let's go. We're going to talk to someone in this first house over here. And this is going to be part of our good washing campaign. Because when we complete this quest, we're going to get plus one reputation. Which is going to make our evil party members cranky. But will overall hopefully help us get better prices. We're going to go and pick up uh, Jahira and Khalid. And then we're going to go and do that. All right, we've got a fight up over here. Um, okay, we're going to try it as is first. Just send Monty up here. And get everyone else spread out back here. Hi, friend. What is Try to minimize the chance that the horror screws us. 
All right. You spoke at Everyone me. go and attack. Something troubles Var, you're going to Larlock's Minor Drain this guy. Hopefully interrupt the spell. There we go. This guy can drop an AoE Fear on your party, this and he can actually, like, completely mess you up. Kills a lot of newbie parties with that. Um, yeah, we don't actually need to keep these letters around here with the bounty notice. I always do that. I don't think... I mean, maybe they sell for a buck in some places, but... There's Gawain's letter. We can punch that as well. That's okay. Alright, let's go inside. We want to say hi hey, to Dorn. Friend. Good. What's up? Oh, I'm not your server. You okay, good. Me? I'm sure we'll, uh... We might Take run into you near the Nashkel Mines relatively soon. This guy's got a little flavor text. Let us know that there's a terrible iron shortage going on in this realm. Oof. All right, Khalid and Jahira. Calm yourself, dear. We must proceed Ah, uh, your company would be most welcome. Excellent. All right. It's been dread for a slow business lately. Let's see. Um, I'm going to keep the scrolls. I'm going to get rid of the oil speed. Because of money. Ooh, I should have sold both these at the same time. So the first one sold for 250. You see this one selling for less. Uh, you ideally want to sell the same copies of the same thing at the same time so you don't get the diminishing return. Maybe I'll just hold on to this until we get to the next town. Uh, are we going to be equipping a long one anywhere else other than this? I don't think so. Sell the belt at the antipode, which I have no particular desire to do. Use the potion of invisibility and the potion of healing. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's get Zvar. Well, someone's going to be using a sling regardless. So I'm going to get a sling over here and sling stones. Three stacks of those is going to be... You know what? I should get more. Um, oops. Because I just bought one by itself. Sling stones, you don't get, um, you don't get as quickly as easily as you do um, arrows. Very few things seem to drop sling stones. We don't have to talk to this guy, because you can do things like out of order, you can get the item first, you get but he's going to tell us about the ogre with the belt around. fetish. So at least it'll show up in the journal, but there's no reason you need the quest first. We are, of course, going to talk to this nobleman. No time to chit And, uh, yeah, he's got some pantaloons he wants laundered. So we have the golden pantaloons now. The most powerful item in the entire game. So Landrin is going to give us a quest to go and clear out spiders. Um, depending on your reputation here, uh, they will give you different levels of warning about the threats. If you have a really good reputation check, they, there's probably stuff to steal here, but I mean, it's not going to be worth much at this point, and I'd rather just move on with the story. But yeah, on a really good reputation check, they give you five antidote potions, which that's pretty useful for fighting them with spiders. Temple over there, but there's nothing in there for us right now. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna kill ourselves some hobgoblins, some hobbly gobs. Pick up the ring, and yeah, we'll turn it in over there. We could just keep the ring and sell it for money, but I'd rather pick up the XP. Although we are gonna be throwing some XP on some dudes here that we don't really care about. Maybe I shouldn't finish that quest actually now that I think about it, until I have the party members I actually care about. That's not a bad idea. You know what? Scribble's got hobgoblins. Uh, ooh, I need to leave the map on the opposite side. Actually, you know what? No, I, right, I don't want to fight the hobgoblins. So we are going to come this way. I'll move towards the right, and we're going to pick up a new character, which makes me think. I need to make sure... Well, we'll, we'll take all this equipment off of... Uh, Lest your head leave your neck. Off of Inwin after we've confirmed that we don't need to do any more fighting with her. Well, maybe what I'll do is I'll take the uh, one magic missile off right now, so I don't forget. She can keep the other stuff. What part of I'm alone? But we're not going to need him to win because we've got me. I'm going to be a thief. In fact, I'm even a thief mage. It's quite common to dual class Imwin from a thief into a mage uh, during Baldur's Gate One. Canonically, that's what happens to her um, because when you join, when you get her in Baldur's Gate Two, she's dual class to a mage. Whether or not it's worth it in Baldur's Gate One is a little bit debated. Um, because if you do dual class her away from Thief, you're not going to have her as a Thief for a while. Um, and it's not that long of a game. Uh, I think it's fine. I, I... Ambrosia. Yes, I know, I know. You yes, promised you we go to Nashkel. Don't worry, it's going to happen soon. All right, Zvar. You having a hard time? Help me! Also, I never... If you don't help me, you'll kill me! Aconia! Best cleric in the entire game. Alright, yeah, we'll help you. Sure, mm-hmm. 
I serve the flaming fist. All right, woman is hard wanted for murder. Dark elf, so it's obvious she's evil. It, the funny thing is, Vakoni is actually evil. Like you can detect evil, and she is indeed evil. But as for, this guy never actually presents, as far as I know, any evidence whatsoever that she's responsible for any murder, other than she's prime suspect number one because she's a drow or dro if you prefer. Perfectly fine pronunciation. I say drow. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, you'll have to get through us if you want her. Um, yeah, I guess that's too bad. Sent us up to death. This See, this guy's just an ass good. with uh, an overinflated sense of authority. Stop touching me! There we go. Excellent. Yes. And I think Imwin has decided that these uh, forests are very pretty, and she's going to retire here and learn the ways what of magic. Need you dead? Hey, Vakonia. How's it going? Jalcales? Uh, yeah, we need the extra help. Of course, we'll take you along. And... Imwin's gonna stay in the forest. What you want? I may not kill you after all. So you lose two points of reputation just from having a dark elf in the party. So if Akonia joining the party costs you two reputation, that's if she ever leaves the party, you gain it back. Uh, you can check your reputation over on your character sheet. Well, on any character sheet. It's going to be uh There it is. Reputation. I was gonna say it's right near the top in the proficiencies. Reputation we're currently disliked. That's fine. Um, if you do go, yeah, to one or two, good characters will leave. Um, and also, you'll get, He's like, harassed by all sorts of, like, cops and stuff, which we don't want to deal with. Um, if you're playing a good party, or if you're, I mean, at this point, we're not evil enough that would cause problems, uh, you can pick up a Gentis over here. Fantastic extra character uh, for your good runs. Very, very highly recommended, but not terribly useful to us at this juncture. Um, okay, let me... I guess I'll change the memorizations after we see. This better be good. Let me pop back over here. And we'll see if we can take on that ogre. Hello, pal. Uh, yeah. You can tell us about it. Uh, Jahira. Good. Okay, you do have entangled. Perfect. What need you dead? I'm gonna turn off the party AI. This next little bit. So it's nighttime. I think we can do sneaky, sneaky stuff. I can't remember if the stealth mechanics work. I don't really do sneaky, sneaky, sneaky stuff other than um, in situations where I wish I was failed. Um, other than in situations where I'm using invisibility. This is not going to work very well for us. It's going to be okay good. during the day. So right over here should be the ogre. Nature I'm going to be cheesy here. Since we are playing on insane difficulty. I'm gonna blindly. Oh, we are gonna need to be able to shoot him. Dead? Oh, oh no, these are Zvartas. Guess I'm happy I didn't use it here. No. Well, maybe, is the ogre up near the top, no. a little higher? Possible. All right, if I turn on the AI again, healing should happen. So, other than the custom portrait over here. Uh, I'm playing the base game with no mods. I'm not playing with uh, SCS or anything like that. Well, However, I, I am playing it's with a cool. custom party AI script. The Enhanced Power Gaming script's over here. You can go ahead and look that up. Um, it gives you a new script for your your player, your characters over here. And the reason I'm using this is for two reasons. One, you can use a single hotkey, the B key, to have your characters cast their buffs, uh, their pre-battle buffs. Um, I find it incredibly tedious to manually cast the pre-battle buffs all the time. Um, and so oftentimes I don't end up using them, which is not great because your character's a lot weaker if you don't use that. Uh, the other thing the Enhanced Power Gaming Scripts does is when you're out of combat, it will automatically uh, have your characters cast healing your spells for you. Oh, and it just removes day, some Kalu. slightly Hello. tedious steps. Must rest. Okay. Must rest. You must have a low constitution. Becoming exhausted is based on that. Okay. If and I'm not allowed to sleep, our next okay. assailants may More exhaustion. Let's go ahead and rest. Oh, I should have changed the spells. Oh, well. That's fine. There's the ogre. So I'm going to try to pull my people back a little yes, bit. Oh, omnipresent and you're going to try to drop an entangle centered over there. Okay. Pull back. Ah. Dang. I should have cast it a little further ahead. 
Oh well, let's see what we can do here. We may have to do some kiting. Um, you're gonna use command, which will cause the ogre to fall down um, for a turn if he uh, he does that. I don't even know if I want to move one front forward, but. Oh good, there. Command work. Leave me be, lest your head leave your neck. Olsa. Um, you know you can probably move forward. Perfect. Okay. Failed on the entangle, but everything else worked all right. Do you not understand? Now, I believe... Oh, who picked that stuff up? There you go. I believe this thin girdle is the girdle, the elfbane girdle, that protects you from piercing and slashing. And the big one is the gender swap you want. I can't pause. Oh, because the spell is still going on. Or can't save. I guess I could wait for things to get ID'd. Oh, hold on. My main character has identifications. No, that's not my main character. I'm used to being at the top of the thing. If I take off my armor, identify this. I gotta equip that armor as well. Yeah, there you go. Defense against missile and piercing attacks, which I think I will give to Vaconia right now. Um... Jahira is neutral, so she's totally fine to stick around in the evil party, although she's probably quite, kind of whiny about it. Uh, Khalid is a good character, so he doesn't work in a uh, in an evil party. If we went full evil, which again, we're not going to. We could run all kinds of good characters, but we're trying to give our evil characters a chance to shine for a change. Um, I am a fighter, so I can wear the plate mail. I mean, I can't do my sorcery stuff if I've got any armor on, and if I've got heavy armor, I can't do detect traps. But I might just do that. We could give it to uh, Khalid, but I don't really care about him. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll throw a helmet on so we don't get critted. And Monty, we'll give you the shield for sure. Why not? And throw that on there. Okay. Why don't I just get far enough away from the entangle if I can save? No, perhaps not. Okay. We're just heading to the south here. And to leave the map. I don't think there's anything else of interest on this map. I mean, I think there's a couple NPCs you can get story. We will want to come here for something later. It doesn't even sell for much, so I don't know why I'm bothering with that, but what the heck, right? I guess what we're going to do, too, is we're going to put in a cut over here. So, yeah, I'm... In theory, we're going to try to play relatively quickly here, especially through the starting parts of the game. And I'm hoping we can get through the story like in relatively decent time. I'm not necessarily gonna 100% everything, although I think we're gonna try to do a lot of the content because I'm kind of looking forward to it. And we can carry over a little bit more XP into the next game. Yeah, I suspect, I suspect there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. In terms of our current party and who's going to be a permanent addition to our group, I believe, hold on, let me br my, bring my notes because I had the plan. Um, I believe we are going to be keeping Jahira in our group. And we're definitely keeping Vaconia. I was sort of offended about Jahira, but I think we are going to be keeping her in our group. Uh, but um, Monty, Zvar, and Khalid do not have a place in our party. We've already met someone who will, that i.e. Dorn. And the other two, well, or the other two, other one? Have I lost count? Yeah, the other two are still a mystery for now. Although we'll be picking up one very soon. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.